Hey everybody, John Peterson here, and today I'm going to show you how I process this image from Bandon, Oregon. I shot this a few months ago down on the coast when I was leading a workshop there, and we had a great group out on the beach, and on this night we had a phenomenal sunset. The sky just erupted and made for just beautiful images in this iconic location. You know, I'm a big proponent of trying to get it right in camera and in doing so, it means that I don't have to do as much processing to make the image good or great. So this is an image that was already fairly good in camera, good exposure, good composition, of course, not a lot of uh, visual noise around. And so a lot of the processing that I do for this is going to hopefully take this from good are great in my eyes you don't have to like it i like it and that's what counts because i'm the artist um, so let's take a look at how i process this using both lightroom and photoshop all right let's go jump right in all right let's take a look at this first shot uh, this was shot on the oregon coast down at bandon and this prominent rock offshore is called face rock because it looks like a face. You know, there's the nose, there's the mouth. Um, very famous, iconic landmark. So in evaluating this shot, the first thing I did, you know, obviously when I imported all of these images into my catalog, I went through and I starred the ones that I thought would be of interest to me. And now I recently came back into the catalog and I saw this image and thought, ooh, this has some great potential. Why does it? Well, first off, there's great color, you know, and, and people respond to color. I respond to color. It's, it's got a lot of great color. I've got some great lines that are happening up here in the sky in these clouds. Some great visual interest in there. And then along with that, I've got these other horizontal lines of the sand. So I've got some foreground interest, some midground interest, and some background interest. So compositionally, I know it's got some potential to work with. Then when I start looking further at this image, I know Bandon's a difficult place to shoot to get separation between all of the sea stacks. There's so many of them out there that it can be a really difficult challenge to get enough separation and, and minimize the amount of overlap that we have. And, you know, if I look at the, the major compositional elements in this shot, of course, face rock is the biggest one. But then these two rocks over here play an important role in the photograph. And whether I want them to or not, they do because A, they're big and B, they're dark. And so both of them carry a bunch of visual weight. And so I know that I need to evaluate these rocks in terms of this composition to say, are these portrayed well enough that they don't detract from the shot? You know, granted, the majority of the shot is out here in the sky, face rock, and then this beautiful color and lines in the sand, but I can't ignore the left side of this image. The first thing that I notice with these rocks is look at this space right here. I've got just a little bit of space between these two rocks, and it's fantastic. That's just what I want. So this is going to work great. I've got a really nice reflection of them. So I've got some symmetry going on here. Um, you know, if I'm looking at other overlaps, these little rocks here do overlap on face rock, which is not ideal, but there's nothing I could do to change that. And because they're small and don't uh, have a strong presence in the shot, I'm okay with letting them go beautiful. Now comes a time when, when I start looking at processing. What do I need to do to process this image? The first things that I did, you can see over here on the right, I made some adjustments to exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, you know, all of those things just to sort of balance the exposure 
and manage the darks and lights and manage some of the color. So though, that's what I would consider basic processing. But now, what do I want to focus on from an artistic perspective? The things that catch my eye in this shot, first off, is this really dark, quiet foreground. This is awesome. I love this quietness at the bottom of the image. Then I start gradually getting into a bunch of vibrancy, which is here. I've got great color, great vibrance. Um, and then I come up to the sky and it looks like the sky could use a little bit of work. You know, this area up here is a little bit bland. It's neither dark nor light. It's neither colored nor not colored. This area is a little bit, <laughs> and then the clouds, I want to accentuate these lines or these streaks in the clouds. And one of the best ways to do that is um, I could either do the sky mask in Lightroom or I could do a linear gradient. And I think I'm going to stick with the linear gradient just so I blend a little bit of the sky and the ocean together so it's not such an abrupt transition. So one of the first things I want to kind of play with is exposure and see what that does to the upper left corner. If I start moving the exposure, well, you know, this looks really good over here, but up here, I don't really like the looks of it that much. So let me try another technique. And that would be drop the blacks a little bit to give a little bit more weight up here, a little bit darker, a little bit more weight. But then it also adds some darkness into the clouds. So the dark parts of the clouds start to pop a little bit more. And I will add a little bit of whites back in to bring some light back. And then I might bump the contrast up just a smidge. So, so if you see if I play with the contrast slider, right, it gets crazy. But just a little bit more contrast other than blacks and whites. You know, and I go from that to that a lot more presence in the sky so that is wonderful and then the next step would be all right what do i need to do with these clouds well one of the ways to bring them out in lightroom is with texture and clarity and, and you know and you can see in the lightroom box itself it says presence well, I want, to, I want these clouds to have more presence in the image, so I'm going to up the texture a little bit. This is kind of micro contrast. And as I, as I play with the slider, you don't see a ton in this image, but I know it's there. Clarity is the more abrupt and more uh, dramatic change. So if I really increase clarity or decrease clarity, you can see how... Oops, let me put the mask back on. That might help. So let's go up to texture. You know, if I take away clarity, it smooths everything out, adds like an Orton glow effect to it. If I bump clarity all the way up, it creates a really dramatic scene, which is much too far for where I want to go. So let's just add a little bit of clarity into this. You know, in my sky, I'll turn off the mask, my sky, I've gone from that to that a lot more presence a lot more definition it's a stronger compositional element in the in the uh, in the image so let's jump over to Photoshop to sort of finish this processing All right now that we're here in Photoshop now's the time for some finishing touches on the image you know, I was fortunate that I could do enough of the processing in Lightroom because it was fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Lightroom's got some great tools. So I don't have to do as much in Photoshop as I would in Lightroom. One of the first things I typically do for every image though is I clean up stuff. And normally I will do um, just a little bit of processing in, in Lightroom and then bring it into Photoshop, do cleanup and then do the bulk of my color and tonality processing. But in this case, I was able to do a lot in uh, Lightroom, so I don't need to do a lot uh, here in Photoshop. But cleanup, the cleanup tool is the best tool to use. 
Now it's the uh, it's the band-aid over here, the spot healing brush, or you can hit J on your keyboard. And then I'm just gonna look for little spots and dots around here because I want a very smooth sand. And thankfully, there's just a couple of little areas that need some adjustment. Now, the last two, the two things I want to do here. One, I want to do a little bit of dodging and burning on the clouds to further accentuate the streakiness that we have here. And I'm using the Tony Kuiper TK8 panels and they have this great brush tool or uh, dodge and burn tool. You click it and it calls up the brush tool and I'm going to put a very low opacity, like 3%. Adjust my brush size and just go over some of the darker areas of the clouds to give them a little bit more pronouncement in the scene. So just a little bit of that and you can see, you know, there's with it, without it, with it, without it. I want to make very, very subtle adjustments. Then to contrast that with a little bit of dodge or lightning, still at 3%, I'm going to go around and in between some of these areas to bring a little bit of brightness back into it. And I'm only doing it here where the streaks are a little bit more pronounced. And it's very subtle and I just want to feather in my brush strokes. I'd rather do five gentle brush strokes than one really heavy one. But there's uh, without dodge, there's with dodge. So a little bit of lightning. Um, and so collectively, there's without the adjustments, there's with the adjustments. Beautiful. And the last thing I do to every single image is I add a vignette. So I've got a built-in action here with TK8 that I'll just add a quick vignette. It does it too, it, it does it automatically and it brings it in at a 50% opacity and then depending on the image, I will adjust it um, typically down and have less of, of a vignette. Because what happens if you see here at 50% right out here, the color is starting to get a little bit wonky and it's a little bit too contrasty and too um, abrupt. So, you know, there's without the vignette there's with the vignette. So if I back this down to let's say 30% and I'll toggle it on and off again, not bad. I might even go down just a little bit more and we look at without and with. And what, what that's, that vignette is really doing, it's doing two things. Number one, it's directing the viewer's eyes out here towards the middle of the scene. And number two, Vignettes tend to add a little bit of visual depth to an image. So, you know, I'm shooting a three-dimensional scene on a two-dimensional medium. I want to do all I can to add depth. And so vignette is one of those things that'll do that. So real quick in Photoshop, you know, it was that and that, and I'm basically done with this image. So now I'll save this as a PSD file in, uh, onto my uh, RAID hard drive, and then I'll create output versions for my social media accounts. So there you go, folks. Hope you like that, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.